Hey nerds, my name's Trent, and Black Panther is taking the world by storm to commercial and critical acclaim. The latest movie from the NCU has plenty to offer in terms of compelling story, outstanding visuals, and a rich lore to explore, focusing on the journey of T'Challa to bear the responsibilities of King of the Nation. But, as we've come to expect from Marvel, the post credit scenes are there to be dissected and spark eager anticipation for the upcoming films. For those who are yet to see Black Panther, be warned, there are spoilers in this video regarding some key plot points and the end credit scenes, so look away now if you don't want to know. Now Black Panther has two post credit scenes, the first of which relates specifically to the events of the movie. This scene shows T'Challa and the other Wakanda representatives meeting with the world leaders to announce Wakanda opening its borders to the rest of the world and joining what looks to be the United Nations. While this may not seem significant, given the context of the film, it is a huge step forward for Wakanda as a nation. Throughout the film, Wakanda is reluctant to let the world know about their technological advancements, in particular vibranium, with fears for the element being used for weapons, leading to the world considering the element and the country to be almost mythological in nature. Now the main story sees Eric Killmonger want to spread this technology to the world through taking control of the nations by force with a plan set to attack the key nations like the United States. Repeatedly it is reiterated by the King's Council that it is not their way to interfere with the outside world through risk of invasion, again by someone like Ulysses Claw. So it is clear that there will be huge ramifications moving forward in future movies with Wakanda opening its borders and making themselves known to the world. The scene ends with T'Challa being asked what Wakanda, a third world nation, can possibly bring to the world, which the King of Wakanda gives a smirk to Everett Ross, played by Martin Freeman, before the screen cuts to black. We obviously know that the Vibranium and the Wakandan technological advancements will be implemented in the future. It's a good tongue-in-cheek way to comment on how quickly people are to judge others based on their appearances and demographic. The second scene airs right at the very end of the credits. In this scene we see a tiny village on the lake on the outskirts of Wakanda, with T'Challa's sister Shuri helping the villagers. The children ask about a man known as the White Wolf to the locals. This is a nod to the Black Panther character from way back known as the White Wolf, a Caucasian who was adopted by the former King T'Chaka and a member of the Wakandan covert ops groups, the War Dogs. The White Wolf in this circumstance is shown to be Bucky Barnes, the former Winter Soldier, who's no longer frozen and appears to be recovering from having his Sovert programming removed from his memory. Shuri asks Bucky how he's feeling, to which he replies, I'm better. Bucky is still missing an arm in this scene, which pretty much all but confirms that he'll get a brand new arm in Infinity War, which if you've seen the trailers, kinda gives away. While this scene doesn't give any hints or lead into Infinity War, it does put a major player back in the field that will no doubt play a huge part in the upcoming film. So that's it for the post credit scenes. While they may have been minute compared to other scenes from Avengers or Thor Ragnarok, they do do a good job in setting up future story arcs beyond Infinity War. So, what did you think of the credits? Did you think they did their job to get you excited? Or were you kind of underwhelmed for what the future may bring? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Movie Nerds. So I'm Trent, and I'll see you nerds at the movies.